Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television, our community connected. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff DeRaw. We're at the Ellis County Historical Society visiting with Executive Director Don Westfall. And our visit today is going to cover several things concerning uh, the uh, Ellis County Historical Society, the first of which is a new organization that uh, Don has kind of been heading up, if you will, called the Old Hayes City Corral of the Westerners. Did exactly. I get that right? You got the whole thing correct. <laughs> Very good. Tell me about the name itself, first of all. Okay. Uh, who is a Westerner and what's it all about, Don? Well, a person can join the organization for a mere $15, if you'd like and become part of the old Hay City Corral of the Westerners, which is actually part of a larger organization called Westerners International <coughs> that was incorporated as a nonprofit in 1959, although the movement started in 1944 in Chicago to have these corrals around the country where anyone interested in Western history can join and become part of a local study of Western history. Now the one here we formally chartered last November we only had our organizational meeting, though, in February, and then we had another one in March. We'll meet every month, the fourth Thursday of every month, and right now we're at the Rose Garden Steakhouse at 7 p.m. for those meetings. What's the purpose of the uh, organization? Well, to foster mm -hmm. interest and in study in the subject of the American West. And a person need not be a professional historian to join this, I should reiterate. Uh, many of the people in it are what we would call buffs or amateur historians. Mm -hmm. But it is open to all, and you can come to the meetings without necessarily joining, but we would like to have you be a part of it if you want to continue to meet with us over there. Nice little brochure. This is actually an international organization. It is, it? right. Uh, they have uh, at least 145 <laughs> chapters or corrals, as they call them, all over the world, not just in the United States. Uh, as there were, is even one in England that's very active called the English Society of the Westerners. And uh, we are fortunate to finally have one in western Kansas. There has been one called the Kansas Corral of the Westerners that focuses mostly on the eastern part of the state. So now we have our own here in the western part of Kansas, which seems certainly appropriate given the importance of western Kansas to western history. The uh, group meets monthly. That's right. $15 dues if you'd like right. to join. Open to all and not necessarily having a history background, just a no. kind of an interest in the uh, That's right. organization and the history. That's right. And it, you don't necessarily have to have <coughs> Kansas history as your focus. Uh, any aspect of uh, Western history mm -hmm. uh, would be enough to get you into the organization. But we assume most of the people who will join here will be particularly wanting to study something re regarding this area. We are in the main gallery of the Ellis County Historical Society Museum talking about uh, uh, the uh, current exhibits which are underway, uh, celebrating or at least recognizing, maybe would be a better way to say right. it, Don, uh, right. the beginnings of World War I. That's true, right. I mean, many people may not realize it, but we are in what is the beginning of the centennial for World War I. It started in 1914 in Europe. The United States was not involved until later in 1917. Mm -hmm. But we're considering the whole subject here, and we have a representation in the museum, which we call Over Here and Over There, which talks not only about World War I, but also how it affected Hayes and Ellis County, too, because many young men from here served in World War I then eventually. And the war to end all wars, I it, believe. It was, it was thought of at that time. Of supposedly. course, as we know in retrospect, that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. But that was how it was termed. It was called the Great War then, mm -hmm. and World War I later, clearly. But we do have... Uh, a lot of objects in our collection related to that, interestingly enough, particularly in the area of weaponry. I know we've got carbines and rifles behind us here from different countries, Russia, Italy, France, Japan, and a, a Schwarzluce uh, machine gun from Austria-Hungary, as well as a artillery saddle from the United States Army and an officer sword from the United States Army. And of course, a lot of background too that's, that's uh, part right. of this exhibit. Absolutely. Something we'd like to look forward to, uh, if we could, is one of the highlights of the spring events at the Historical Society, Don, and that's your Pioneer Days event. That's right. We, well, we have that every year. This will be the 13th annual, as a matter of fact. And this is something that's geared toward uh, children in school uh, ages, uh, not ages, but grades, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, historical interpreters and demonstrators here on the site. The, and each uh, class will go to one station after another and be shown how a particular pioneer activity might have taken place. And we also have musical entertainment as part of this. 
And uh, we hope this year to have some animals come back too. We've had that previously, but we didn't last year because they were certainly an important part of the pioneer period here in Ellis County. I think it's interesting. You always see, don't you, a good response from the kids about uh, things like uh, uh, weaving, butter churning, that's things right. like that, 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 right. that they have no knowledge of. No, that's right. A corn shelling, uh, <clears throat> clothes washing actually with just a washboard and a tub mm -hmm. too. Surprises them that that's how that was done mm -hmm. because virtually uh, no one these days has that sort of a farm mm -hmm. experience anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, to them, it seems as though that definitely represents a period far beyond when they were born. I want to highlight, if we could, the uh, Ellis County Historical Society membership and uh, how people can become involved in the Historical Society oh, right. as a member or as a participant, if you That's will. That's true. Yes, uh, <clears throat> not only membership, but as you say, volunteering is another thing that we'd like to have happen as much as possible. But uh, all one needs to do to join is to either come here in person or send in a membership <clears throat> application and it's only $15 for a single and $25 for a family. And student rate is even less than that, five and $10 for a senior. But with that goes free admission and special invitations to special events and special programs, as well as a 10% discount in the museum store. And in addition to the static displays, there are always uh, ongoing changing displays which That's take right. place, plus programs as well. That's right, absolutely. Well, one thing we've, uh, had recently are a series of authors who have come here to autograph their books and speak about the subject of their books. In most cases, these have been uh, in the area of Western history. And the one uh, that happened most recently was just this past Monday, March 31st, where we had Jeff Barnes here, who was a former newspaper editor and reporter from Omaha, Nebraska. And his book uh, just published is Great Plains Guide to Buffalo Bill. I'm glad you mentioned that because this will give us a chance to uh, promote the gift shop as well because uh, Jeff's books are both available in the gift shop. Uh, the first, uh, he's not a newcomer to this either. The first oh, one was right. on Custer, wasn't it? That's right. His first book of this type that was least of interest to us here would have been called The Great Plains Guide to Custer. And then he followed up with this one we were just mentioning, The Great Plains Guide to Buffalo Bill. And we're working on him now to produce A Great Plains <laughs> Guide to Wild Bill Hickok, and he is considering that so that the triumvirate uh, will be uh, covered here. And all of them interesting to Hayes and Ellis County because these individuals were here at the same time, basically. And it's the only time in their careers when they were all together in one area. Basically, we can certainly uh, uh, amplify the phrase when history walked the streets, well, literally. That's certainly true around here. Buffalo Bill is the second of the series, and then hopefully still to come would be the one on here. That's what we're uh, <laughs> lobbying for currently with him. Now. Uh, Jeff, of course, uh, resident of Omaha. I Omaha, believe. Nebraska. Um, the gift shop. Talk about That's that. That's right. A bit. Well, these books are available there. Mm -hmm. These are autographed, as a matter of fact. That's one thing that happens when these authors visit ah. us is that they will autograph their books, which makes them a nice gift. But we carry a, a range of books on the subject of Western history, with an emphasis specifically on Hayes, Ellis County, and Kansas, of course. But in addition to that, we have souvenirs related to these subjects. And another area definitely of interest to people here locally would be Volga German history. Mm -hmm. We have uh, genealogical materials as well as uh, uh, historical works related to that subject. The uh, gift shop is open same time the museum is. Um, that's right. We try to about, stay. Uh, yeah, how about hours? That's right. We try to have our hours consistent with when everything is open mm -hmm. rather than having something open at one time and something else open at another time. So the museum store as well as the museum itself uh, the hours would be 9 to 6 Tuesday through Saturday and 1 to 6 on Sunday. And that's consistent throughout the year as well. Uh, kind of nice that you went to the specific hours uh, during uh, the season so that we right. kind of get an idea that, well, the season shifted, so when are they open and that type of thing. That's, well, I've worked at nice. other places where that was the case, particularly when I was in Minnesota at museums there. We'd have these uh, seasonal hours where we'd be open, say, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, but then we'd be closed the rest of the year or mm -hmm. something comparable to that anyway. I think it's a lot easier for visitors, not only locally, but people coming from elsewhere, if you have a, a schedule that is the same all the time so they don't have to wonder whether you're going to be open or not. Fascinating place to work, I think, yeah, uh, Ellis yeah, County Historical Society. What about volunteers? If somebody would oh, be, right. have an interest in becoming a volunteer, what kind of time commitment are we talking about? Okay. Here? Well, we did allude to that with regard to membership. A person can volunteer without being a member, although almost, virtually all of them are. But uh, we can use members in almost all areas of the operation here. Well, museum store would be one, the lobby mm -hmm. and store area. We certainly need help there. We can use costumed interpreters for some of the events we have. 
and we can also utilize people down in the archives to help mm -hmm. with photographs and documents and research on family history. So there's probably something here for almost anyone, regardless of your skills, even in the area of carpentry, for example, would be mm -hmm. a place where we could use some help. So uh, the hours, there's no particular commitment that is necessary. As little time as you have, we can probably utilize you or more. We have some people who are here constantly almost as much as the paid staff. And then we have others who just come for special events and mm -hmm. help with that, but they don't really have time necessarily to work on a week-to-week week -week basis. I hadn't thought about that, but if you have some skills perhaps in uh, things like carpentry or, That's right. or needs like that, maybe check in here at the Historical yeah, Society and see if there isn't a need that you could fill. Right, something in the maintenance category would be helpful too in some mm -hmm. cases, or photography. Other, you know, Almost uh, everyone has some sort of skill or talent they can be applied to working here. They may not think so, but once they get here, they may find that's the case. And I'll bet the gift shop would be a fascinating place because you're going be. to see people from literally all over the country and that's true. sometimes all over the world coming oh, here. That's right. I mean, we do get visitor, international visitors, definitely, from all over the world and all continents, I guess, except probably Antarctica so far. It's a nice tie-in, too, with historic Fort Hayes, I think, Don. Oh, it is, right. Well, we, we have a lot in common with them, needless to say, because of some of the <laughs> historical characters and events. Mm -hmm. And we certainly want to work with them as much as we can because we have so much uh, similarity in what we're pursuing. Now, normally we talk about history as things in the past, but as historians, you have to look to the future as well. Oh, that's right. And the future is coming uh, quicker than we might imagine. I with, know, just uh, around the corner. 2017, right? right? That's a magical year, or will be, for us here, because that will be the sesquicentennial, or 150th anniversary of Hayes and Ellis County. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things happened 150 years ago, too, or will have at that point, such as the railroad arriving here, the founding of Rome, mm -hmm. uh, and also Boot Hill Cemetery, in addition to those characters we talked about earlier all being here at that same time. Mm -hmm. So many events in the history of Hayes and Ellis County took place in 1867, so we'll be 150 years from that point in 2017. And so we are here at the Ellis County Historical Society already ramping up for that. We've created a sesquicentennial ad hoc committee within our own organization to make some decisions as to what we want to have happen with our own institution, but also in the community at large drawing other entities yeah, right. in that uh, can help convention visitors bureau uh, yeah. chamber a lot of different activities hope that the cvb and the chamber will be a part of this and i'm sure they will be mm -hmm. and this will be coming in 2017 i know then. it's only three years from now yeah. it sounds like a long way off in some instances but when you're planning mm -hmm many events, uh, it will probably get here a lot sooner than we would like in some respects. Great handout materials available here, not only for the museum itself, but also by the new organization, the Old Hayes City Chorale of the Westerners, right. which you can pick up now. And if you'd like to become a part of it, this uh, brochure will explain everything from who can join to what it is. They call them posses in some areas, I guess. That's true too. Yeah. And uh, what's the history of the Westerners and international and it'll even tell you about the story of Old Joe here and free literature available oh, yes, as right. always. That's right, the symbolic buffalo skull, Old Joe. We still have to get one for our own club here, our own uh, crowd. I I'll say. bet you're working on that. Oh, we right are, now. absolutely. We should have that uh, in no time flat, I think. So if you'd like more information about the Westerners or the Hayes organization, contact uh, the executive director of the Ellis County Historical Society Museum, Don Westfall. Our guest today on Community Connection from the Ellis County Historical Society. And don't miss the World War I exhibits as well on the uh, centennial observance of World War I, the Great War as it was known. Our Community Connection. Thanks for watching.